Od 7. edycji tego kongresu, która odbywa się pod hasłem Łączymy Wszystkich, a dziś na scenie podczas But, uh, ceremonii otwarcia tego all... kongresu doszło do niezwykle ważnego wydarzenia. During the opening, uh, we have had a very important event, signing the letter of intent be energy, uh, between LASA Energy and INEA. It was a letter of intent for working on a nuclear reactor, small nuclear reactor. It's an important event for Polish energy, and I will speak about it with Brad Kublomas, our guest, President and founder Hello. of Last Hello. Energy. Yes, thank you. So, first of all, tell us a little bit about the emotions uh, you had on stage uh, during this beautiful ceremony. Uh, I mean, this event is just amazing to begin with and to see the country's leadership treat us with such high praise has been awe-inspiring. You, you know, I've learned a lot coming to this country over the last few years, a lot about energy security. You know, most people think about energy in terms of clean energy back in the US and how we can do the clean energy transition. But Poland has made it clear to us how important the energy security transition is as well. And we've seen that as a theme that has resonated through this entire conference. So I, I'm really just so grateful to be part of it and, and glad that not only can we help here, but we can really help the country also. Yeah, so you know already that uh, it's important for us, uh, for Poland, and how important is it for the company, for Last Energy, in this project? Yes, well, I mean, we're just glad that we can help. And it's amazing to have such a strong partnership with Ania as well, who is going through both a clean energy transition, but also sees it as their imperative to help secure Poland's energy access and energy security future as well. So it really makes for such an important partnership and I'm just glad to be part of it. So tell us more about, uh, to our viewers, about the small modular nuclear reactor. Uh, what kind of problem can it solve? Well, you know, when you think of large scale nuclear reactors, which are great as well, they can power million person cities with clean energy and the energy is always on and it's always secure. And we've seen this across countries like France and Sweden and South Korea, how they've been able to provide abundant clean energy to decarbonize across many sectors and provide cheap, abundant power to industry. So the big reactors are great, but we all know <laughs> that they're very expensive and they're very slow to build. And we need solutions now, okay? We need solutions now. Now, not just for energy security purposes, but for energy access. Our industries are growing and the people demand clean energy. So when you combine those two things together, what you really need is a smaller baseload power source, one that can be distributed. And that's what Last Energy does. We manufacture these micro reactors that can be strategically located to match supply and demand in the same spot. So when a factory needs power all the time, 24 seven, we can give it to them. When uh, a factory needs to grow, yeah. we can give them more power as well. And we have to remember that we have war nearby. So yes, this is also accelerating this whole discussion. And tell us um, how the cooperation between Last Energy and ENA will look like. Ah, well, they're going to be perfect partners helping us to deploy. As you well know, they have several different divisions throughout ENEA, including distribution and generation. And so they are perfect partners to help us understand exactly where the grid needs power and how the grid needs power. And they have the local experience integrating into the grid. So what do we bring? We bring the technology, we bring the know-how, and we bring the capital to accelerate as well. So together, this is how we intend to deploy fleets, entire fleets of our micro-reactors in just a few years' time. When the first micro-reactor will be ready? Well, from a technical perspective, we can do it in under two years. Under two years. Under two years mm -hmm. from a technical perspective, yeah. but of course, we still need to do environmental permitting and licensing and grid integration. And some of these things take a long time. So we'll see which one ends up coming together first, whether it's the technical side or the licensing side, but we're gonna target deployments by 2025 and then establish a factory. So these micro reactors can come off the factory line one at a time over and over and over again. So you can have rapid deployment instead of waiting two years for each power plant. So can we say that in few years, um, this project, uh, this reactors will affect the life of Poles? Yes, it will it'll give them access to energy, it'll give them clean air, and it'll help industries grow and thrive. You have also this kind of projects in other countries yes. of the region? Yes, um, in this region, throughout Europe and throughout the world, especially you know, once this unfortunate geopolitical event occurred, 
um, many leaders of countries reached out to us. Uh, the Prime Minister of Romania reached out to us, flew us out and said, hey, I want some of your projects here too. But Poland is thinking even bigger. Poland is thinking not just a few projects, but how many can we build and how fast can we build and how can we become your manufacturing partners? Matter of scale, yeah. <laughs> yes. And so, uh, and then of course in Western Europe, there's an energy crisis as well. And many of the leaders of those countries have reached out to us and we have similar utility partnerships there too. So we expect to be in at least four countries deploying within three or four years. So we will have a lot of work here in the region and you'll yes. probably come as soon as possible back to Poland, yes? Yes, oh, I'm going to be out here every month now. <laughs> okay, so see you back in Poland. Thank you for this interview. Thank you for being with us at the Congress 590. Thank you for the interview.